I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day It's gonna be bright, bright, bright sunshiny day Yes, I can make it now, the pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is that rainbow I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day Look all around, there's nothing but blue skies Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue skies I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Here is that rainbow I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, bright sunshiny day yeah, 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 bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright. Sunshine dead. <clears throat> Milo, friendly dude. <claps> friendly dude. Brother Bear. He's a brother. Milo's always on the scene. Milo's always on the scene. Alright, here we go, dude. Friendly dude. Brother Bear. Brother Bear. He's a brother. Come on, dude, friendly. Come on, dude. Come on, Milo. Come here. Friendly dude, Milo. He's friendly. Come on,
Alright. Nobody's out there, right? Nobody's watching my nonsense. What do you have to say, Sean? You got 10 minutes to talk out whatever's percolating on your brain. This is your chance to articulate all the abstract thoughts that are on your brain. Dude, I forgot how much I love, uh, I love structural drawing. I don't know why. I just love the idea that there's like a structure, there's a structure underneath Every, there's a structure underneath stuff. Nobody's listening, right? But when I was a kid, I used to look at the construction of buildings and I loved that idea. I loved the idea that underneath the building, there was like beams. When they built a building, they'd build the, the, the cage and the, and the beams first and then they'd drape over the, the walls and the cement and shit. And I like that idea in people. In people, there's a fucking structure and I like that. <laughs> and I like perspective drawing. And I never get sick of it. It's my favorite. It's my favorite type of drawing. My favorite type of drawing is isometric drawing, and then just trying to think think out the the anatomy 
and I'm just I'm just gonna do that I'm just gonna do that on a regular basis anyway and then uh I forgot I forgot how much I love just a uh, structure on faces too faces nobody's listening right but just for the record human faces they have a pattern they have a pattern which pretty much falls within this stuff as a broad generalization most humans they have different shapes and sizes but they all have these components on they all if you broke if you broke down somebody's face into uh lumps if you broke it down into lumps basically if you thought about it as as hills and valleys so each one of these little color shapes is a hill and then the separation between them is a valley if you just break the face into those hills and valleys some version of that hills and valleys is basically around everybody's face but they have different sizes and so if you just kind of outline that person's if you outline that person's uh if you find those hills and valleys on somebody's face in a few different angles and then you 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 have a a polygrouped head with these little things on it you can basically just get those hills and valleys in the right spot and the the mo if you smooth it out appropriately the model's pretty much done but you, the you have to s basically it's a matter of uh the it's a matter of the loc the location of the hills and valleys so people's the location and size of those hills and valleys on different people are in different spots and then basically depending how on how old they are they're smooth they're smoothed out the the valleys are smoother on different people so older people they have they have deeper sharper valleys and younger prettier people they have smoother valleys but they still have the same hills and valleys on pretty much everybody pretty much everybody and those those hills those uh, shapes if you think about each of these as like a little component shape they have certain rules they have certain things that each person's uh, each person's polygroup shape that they have on their face it follows certain patterns and if you just kind of make those polygroups follow those patterns you could come up with a pretty realistic face and I bet you that um, people who do programming, people who uh, people who ha people have already figured this out. I bet you there's there's game companies that are you know Facebook or whatever companies are top notch and making really good uh, scanned head models. They probably just have algorithms that scan somebody's head and and basically give it these some version of these like designated hills and valleys, and also probably implement some version of the general things that those polygroups do. And, it ends up coming out somewhat realistically and then once I have that if I bring it into here and if I uh, basically use those same that same roadmap and and drape on a, a realistic color map because if you if you can have those if you have that roadmap of those hills and valleys you can get you can put that same map over some photos they must do this. They must do this at companies when they're scanning heads now. So if you find the hills and valleys on a photo, you could also kind of use that to drape on a photo of somebody's f face in terms of the color map. And then you can get, uh, you could just have a generic uh, bump map for the, what do they call it? The tertiary, the tertiary uh, bumps, basically the pores and pock marks and stuff. And you can put that on top and use a generic like specular map and you got a pretty realistic face and that's what I like to do <laughs> really I'm really nobody cares but just for record I have a I have kind of a sick obsession with faces and what's his name uh what the hell is that guy's name uh Andrew Huberman Andrew Huberman says that you people have these experiences when they're young like around the time that they're, you know, their formative years and then their teenage years, they kind of shape their brain. And I guess my brain was shaped by the activities that I did in my formative years and my teenage years. And in my formative years, I played a lot of video games. So it's very, I guess it's, I have like a lot of, I have a lot of mileage in terms of like knowing what buttons to push and memorizing the different buttons and locations of buttons. And then, uh, 
when I was in my teens, I used to just obsess over my face. And I thought it was kind of like a nightmare. Like it was like, as a teenager, I would just look in the mirror and, be, and just fret over my face and like fuck with my face and be like, God, I just want like a smaller nose and stuff. And I spent a lot of my teenage years just obsessing over my fucking face. And now I have a brain that's kind of like, that, it's good at obsessing over faces. And so now I can make good models. So good things can be bad things. Can you substantiate that? They can be good, bad things can be good things later. Let's, now let's see if that th shit that I said is true. Is there data to substantiate the idea that pe in people's formative years, like depending on what activities you did a lot as a kid, those kind of shape your brain and make your brain like uh, more inclined to like be able to do that later in your life? Yeah. Yes, there is substantial scientific evidence to support the idea that childhood experiences can significantly shape brain development and influence future behaviors and preferences. But you can fight against that, right? So if you had some bad habits as a kid, you don't have to like keep doing that for the rest of your life. You could you could you could override those in your later years. Is that true? Yeah. But if you want to Absolutely, you, you can, can overcome, overcome bad habits formed in childhood. So, I got some good habits in childhood, but I also got some bad habits. And so I'm trying. I'm I'm going to go to this improv acting class, and I'm trying to override some bad habits. And one of the bad habits I have is basically my childhood years. They had pretty much like no social interaction. Like nobody's listening, right? But if I had a kid, I'll probably never have a kid. But if I had a kid, I would have them do some sort of dinner time like conversation thing. That's really valuable. Like if you if every day if you are having that kid just do like a, sit, a sitting with humans and sustaining eye contact and like talking that's good for them because then later in their life they'll be less likely to like be weirded out by people is that true can you substantiate that so like if you have a kid and you have them do some sort of dinner time conversation every day at the dinner table that might make them you know more comfortable sitting at a table and sustaining eye contact and having back and forth conversations in their adulthood. Whereas if that kid has like almost no social interaction and they're just parked in front of an iPad all day, they might find it uh, kind of awkward to, to do eye contact and table conversation in their older years if they don't sort of fight against that. Is there data to substantiate that? Yeah. Yes, there is substantial research. So yeah, so I got a lot of, ex in my childhood years, my parents, they were really nice to me in the sense that they just let me play video games all day. And I did, I played video games all day, but they were fighting a lot. So they weren't at the house. My parent, my dad did the night shift. Get to the point, Sean. Basically, I wish I did more dinner time conversation and, uh, and now I gotta make up for it. I wanna make up for it by, I'm going to this improv acting class, I'm gonna go to Jiu Jitsu and I'm trying to get like more comfortable with humans because I'm basically like scared of humans. And I'll probably always have like a weakness in that area. What's the point? I don't know, it's just weird. It's weird how it's fucking shit fucking happens. You don't realize it. Nobody's listening, right? But people are kind of grinding all the time on all sorts of shit. Like whatever you're doing every day, you're kind of, gr you're grinding. Can you substantiate that? Yeah, I gotta stop this rant. Is it true that like people, when they say like, I'm, I'm on a grind, when they say they're on the grind, it means that they're daily doing some sort of thing. They're practicing some sort of stuff every day, but kind of everybody's grinding every day, right? Like people are grinding on whatever whatever they're doing every day. You could think of that as grinding. I mean, if they're if they're walking to the bus stop every day, they don't know it, but after a few years, they're going to get really good at walking to the bus stop. Is that true? Yeah. What's your point? It's weird to think that. It's weird to think that basically whatever the hell you're doing you're kind of grinding. And so if you're playing video games or something, if you do that for years, you don't know it, but you're, you're just really good at like selecting buttons. And I noticed that, I noticed that like if I do some like Photoshop type shit, some of my friends who didn't play a lot of video games, they're like really impressed at my ability to be like, oh, you just go to this button and you go to this button, you go to this button. And my brain just is good at like fucking fetching buttons because I did that all through my fucking childhood. Anyway, what's the point? But you can get better at people, you can, uh, you can get better. Anyway, no one cares, Sean. I know. I care, though. I care. This is my channel. 
Okay, so what else? <coughs> so that's it. Uh, so what are the goals for today? Report your goals. Did you do your goals yesterday? Uh, right, so uh, I did. I did all my goals yesterday. What are your goals for today? Uh, my goals for today are to uh, drill. I want to drill some jujitsu moves and get some cardio at the same time. So I'm going to do like a cardio slash cardio slash uh, drilling thing. What else? I want to go to jujitsu. There's a there's a Sunday morning open mat, and I want to go to jujitsu and wrestle four people, preferably three people that I think I can possibly beat, and one person that. I probably can't beat. I want to wrestle like one kind of higher belt. And that's it. And then after jujitsu, I want to uh, either run with my dogs or go to, I want to go to improv acting. So my main goal today is I want to go to improv acting. <clears throat> Nobody cares, but just for the record, I care, I care, this is my job. <clears throat> just for the record, improv acting is the scariest thing on my list. It's uh, something I really want to do. And so I've learned a lot about how this thing operates and I know that <clears throat> I know that that this is the first three months that I'm trying to institute a very scary, unpleasant habit for myself. Is I want to go to improv acting, and I want to go like three times a week. I want to just make. I, if I could go every day, I would want to go every day. But they don't have. I can't find a class every day, and I just want to get used to it. But because it's new, and because I'm so kind of scared of so many things around improv acting it's gonna to try to buck me off. There's gonna be some unpleasant experience, either today or over the next three months, where I'm just like, oh my God, that was so cringy. Oh my God, those people hate me. Oh my God, I just this just isn't for me. And I'm gonna to wanna to quit. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna fucking quit. And even if I quit, I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna be like, just kidding, I, I, I don't quit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find another group. <clears throat> so, how long do you wanna talk about this? I can talk about this for five minutes. So, worst case scenario, if I go to this class, the worst case scenario really is, the people hate me so much that they, this is possible, they might just say, you're so awkward and you're making our experience so unpleasant. We would like it if you just didn't go to this class anymore. That's possible. People sometimes are too bothered by my awkwardness and they're like, we just don't want to deal with you. And so, okay, cool. There's another person I can deal with. They're not the only person in the, what's we want? Just that's, that's, I have to get used to that. It's just because I'm awkward, I'm going to get like rejected by people. That's going to happen all the time. And then I can do what I used to do for all my fucking life, which is just be like, I'm awkward. I should never deal with people ever. But that's going to lead me to be a fucking shut-in person. And so what's my point? <clears throat> just expect that. I'm, I think to myself, do it lame, do it awkward, do it whatever, and encounter reactions. There's going to be reactions to my awkwardness. And the worst reaction is basically somebody just doesn't want to interact with me. Okay, cool. Go find somebody else to interact with. But don't just be like, I just give up. I'm never going to interact with anybody. Or... That's not good. So what's the point? Just worst case scenario, they kick me out of the class. Find another. There's there's like 10 more improv classes that I have on my bookmarks. There's there's at least two or three of them in Berkeley by my jujitsu place. So I'll just go to another one. And then if I, that one fails, I'll go to another one. And that happened with jujitsu too. When I went to jujitsu, the first two places were not right for me. And they're like, ah, oh, we don't really like you. Okay, go to another place. But eventually find some place you can do it. And then last resort is just do it in my fucking room. I can just do it in my room. But I'd like to do it with, like, people. What's the point? Just find it. That's the worst case scenario is they kick me out of the class. But anyway, so that's my goal is to go to jiu-jitsu and try to turn it into what I call a enjoyable, sustainable grind. What does that mean, enjoyable, sustainable grind? Just make it not awful. Try not to make it unnecessarily hard. Just do it easy. Do it lame. Do it simple. And try to find it. Don't make it like a big traumatic experience and just do it at whatever level you can do it and just assume that you're not even going to be good at it for like a year. Just fucking just make the habit something that you can do without it being like a terrifying, awful thing. And so that's my goal basically is just go to, the, go to the thing, just try to do what the people say, get along with the people and just try, try to make it fun or at least not make it like terrifyingly awful. And just I want to go three times a week and also pay for the class. Okay. Sounds good. But then just expect, just prepare for the, the worst case scenario is, is they're just like, we just don't like you. We'd like it if you don't come to this class anymore. I'll be like, okay, no problem. I expect that that's going to happen. That could happen. And I'll be like, no problem at all. Have a good day. I hope you guys have a good class. And then I'll go to another class. And then if that same class says the same shit, I'll go to another class and I'll go to another class. And I have five other classes lined up. And if they all fucking hate me, 
then I'll find another class. But just there's there's class there's improv classes all around the fucking world. You can do them on Zoom too. So it's like I'll I'll just go to I'll, eventually there'll be one that tolerates me. And then fucking all if if they all fucking hate me, I'll just make my own fucking class. I'll just be like fuck it. I'll just make my own. I'll start my own class. People can just do improv in my room or something. But I'm gonna do a fucking class. Okay, so we got that. So let's just relax and try not to make it a big deal. All right. And I want to reassure myself, I can get better. I can get, like, just like jujitsu. Like, I'm trying to do jujitsu, and I'm like, I'm never going to get good at this. I can't get good at this. This is something that's for special people that are cut out for that thing. No. Isn't it true, like, for sure, that you can get better at improv acting? Like, it's not just something that people are born good at, and other people can't do it. If you do it regularly, and you learn the rules, and you practice it, like... I don't know, three times a week or even once a week, given a few years of that, you're going to get better. Probably a lot better if you do it for like years, right? Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Now, when you say absolutely to that question, is that verified by, by like data and a lot of people's experiences? Yes, the claim that improv acting can be learned and improved with practice is supported by both empirical data and anecdotal evidence. So that's what I want to do. This is for the record. If I could control myself like a video game character, I really want to get good at improv acting. Because improv, it's fucking magic. It's a fucking magical thing. Because it's so, it's so, it's just, it's a mind thing. But also, it's like a sheer imagination thing. And it's venturing into the unknown. It's such a fascinating thing because you're venturing into the unknown and the the world is going to like use you. I don't know how to explain it. There's so many fascinating things with improv acting because like there's like energy passing between people for lack of a better term and the you're part of this group and the the, the story is like flowing through the group in a weird way and the the story and the chaos of the story is going to nudge you to like say or do something and you just got to do it. You got to you got to play your part and do the right thing and sometimes it's magic. And you're like, dude, that was like the perfect thing to say right then. And uh, it's really good for me because it's about, it's a bunch of things that I'm really bad at, which I'd like to get good at. Just pay, relaxing and paying attention to your partner. That's like a good thing. And then also just, just venturing into the unknown and realizing that like, I have no idea what I'm going to do, but just letting the random thing, the chaotic random thing that, that is the unknown just happen can be awesome. It can be like a, it can be good. It's hard to do that. Anyway, but it's fun. Okay, so... Uh, people people are often kind of scared about venturing into the unknown, right? And maybe it can be good to like practice on a regular basis, venturing into the unknown. Because from the, the Taoist perspective, the Taoist perspective, life is constantly anew. And sometimes it's good to like seize the moment and jump on that wave that doesn't necessarily go according to your little plan. That's a great observation. The Taoist perspective indeed emphasizes the importance of embracing the unknown and going with the flow. It encourages us to let go of rigid plans and expectations, and instead, to trust in the natural unfolding of life. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I want to trust in the natural unfolding of life. I like I like rigid kind of structure. That's most of my day. Most of my day is very Confucianism, but I want like a little dose of Taoism. What's Taoism? Taoism is the idea that it's good to have rituals. It's good to have customs. It's good to give yourself a to-do list. But at the same time, life doesn't go according to your little plan. And sometimes there's like a wave that pops up. And if you're like, I can't go get that wave. I'm jumping in this one spot. I'm supposed to jump in this one spot. Well, the wave isn't in your like little spot. Like there's a wave over here. You gotta abandon that plan and you gotta fucking jump on that wave. What's it going? That's the Tao. That's the, the the. It's good to be like a little Taoist and a little Confucianist. Is that right? It's good to have like a little Taoism in your life and a little con and a little Confucianism. And some people are more naturally Confucianism and some people are more naturally Taoism. But it's it's good to just. Uh, you know, embrace both of those lifestyles. Is that true? Can you just answer me yes or no as to whether or not that could be like a good thing to practice in life a little bit? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's fucking, it's fucking verified by ChatGPT. Anyway, so I'm ranting too much, but that's I want like a little Taoism. And so uh, there we go. Okay, so what do we? What are our to dos today? Um, like some sort of cardio workout that just does like a bunch of jujitsu type stuff. It's like, I'm going to do this jujitsu type stuff. And my brain, my brain might say, this is weird. This is like a waste of time. And I'm going to think it's just cardio. I'm just doing cardio. But instead of running, why not do cardio with like jujitsu type moves? So I'm going to do like a little jujitsu move and then just turn it into cardio. And then what, then what are we doing? I'm going to run my dog or no, I'm going to, I'm going to do some sort of, uh, improv type thing. I'm going to play Simon. I'm going to run my dog. I'm going to go to jujitsu and then I'm going to do uh, improv acting one or two hours of drawing one or two hours of sculpting, play some piano. Maybe that's a good day. That's, that's, those are my goals. Okay. No one cares what you do, Sean. I care. I care. This is my channel. You're obnoxious, Sean. Not all the time. Not all the time, necessarily. No no one is anything all the time. Can you substantiate that? <clears throat> if someone calls you a label, isn't it true that like no one is any label all the time? So if you have some label in your head or a label from the outside world, you can respond to that by saying, not all the time, necessarily. Like, stupid is as stupid does. Annoying is as annoying does. You can just not be annoying. You're not annoying all the time. Yeah, what's the point? Just fucking, it's good to remember that. Whatever that term is, if some person says, you're this, you're that, you can always say, not all the time necessarily. You don't do anything all the time. Can you substantiate that? Yeah, you just, you don't do anything all the time. So if somebody says that you're a jerk, you just think, not all the time necessarily. But, you know, you have the right to be a jerk sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's a, a valid, valid point. point. Nobody's listening, right? But that's a good that's a good response to negative self talk or any kind of thing. It's like not all the time necessarily, and that applies to good things too. If somebody says you're like a fit guy, not all the time necessarily. I got to keep doing fitness stuff, and then if somebody says you're a jerk, not all the time necessarily. I just I I'll I'll try to stop doing the jerk stuff. Okay, you're a human, Sean. Not all the time necessarily. Uh, before I was born, I wasn't a human. Okay, just get on with your fucking. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You got to get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe My you failed a Tyler. test in school, you yeah, worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Uh, Move past it. Learn to household. not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school, you worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it, move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it, someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it, stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. 
Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. I can't seem to get you off of my mind. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you can work your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You fell the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. Tell me, are you okay? I want to tell you. Just a token. Really a trifle. What I want is your voice. But without my voice. Yeah, like I think that that is kind of what, what am I trying to say? That is kind of the way I see things sometimes, is I just was running around with accents. It just feels good you can talk about it. So it's fun. Did you enjoy that? Like, so this is what I, after, sometimes I worry that they could say, you get what you give. Like, most things tend to happen when people are young. And then if they, if they did it when they were young, they should marry and stay together, maybe. But then there's this period of time where it's just kind of like, I just think like sexy times are for sexy people and sexy people are young people and then after that it's just kind of like it's not supposed to work so anyway I'm trying to nobody's listening right I'm gonna show up in a second but I'm trying to basically reassure myself that basically like there's a good side to this which is basically like now I have to really check myself and just say like okay like let's assume like whatever you do Sean there's not gonna be any gratifying sex ever again now it's just like do you want to do the things you want to do like can you just do things just for the joy of doing them and that's what i'm trying to do is just do stuff and be like did you enjoy that like did that make you feel good and if the answer is yes do that just pretend that all you're getting is spending your time and joy from spending your time and that's it you're not good there's no prize anymore really yeah that's kind of what i keep telling myself it's basically like just uh what do i what do i get what do i get what's the point time? 
just I don't know if anybody's watching this but sometimes I worry that there could be like an impressionable young man who might watch this and think like dude like I should just have fun and just not get a job no like I don't know you should probably go get a job and you should probably go get pussy but as a 44 year old man who basically like there's no there's not really any attractive dating options anymore I keep I've come to this awareness of like what do I get like somebody says like dude you're awful like you're you're you should grow up just grow up dude just go get some job and just uh, act like a grown-up and I ask myself what do I get what do I get for acting like a grown-up so this is what I have I have to read this shit every morning just to not throw my life away at some dead-end service job and and shack up with some overweight ethnic girl uh, what do I get what do I get for just acting like a grown-up nothing that I want there's no like good dating options anymore and there's no good jobs anymore so what do I get for getting acting like a grown-up and uh, and just just acting normal people are like just be normal just this is not normal. Just be normal. What do I get? Nothing that I want. What do I get for just doing whatever I want as long as I don't break any laws? I get to do a bunch of stuff that I want. I'm tr just, I'll take that. That's all I expect. What's his name? Uh, Henry Rollins. Henry Lee Rollins said, all you're getting is older. All you're getting, there's no prize. There's, it's for me anyway. There's no prize at the end of the rope. There's no, basically there's no, there's no dream job and there's no attractive spouse anymore. The, the potential for those prizes I think really is in your 20s and 30s and then it's really like diminishing returns because I'm not attractive anymore so what's the point so just I remind myself what do I get what do I get for for just drinking the Kool-Aid in society just doing the typical like life recipe just go get a job there's no fucking good jobs the service job doesn't afford you like a good life and the dating options at 44 are just just single moms and just it's fucking bleak what's the point just if you're young and cute, if you're young and attractive and you're a male, you should probably get a job. You could still get a good spouse and you could still get a good career, but I can't anymore. And that's more and more the case every year. And so I'm thinking like, fuck it, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. So I just wanna do things where it's just like, if just things that make me feel good and I just wanna basically like chase away the doom. I just wanna do things where it's like, let's just get rid of the doom. And so yesterday I got rid of like a lot of doom. Really? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the name of the game from here on out. It's just chase away the doom. But if you're young and you can like breed with somebody that you're attracted to and, and have a family, that's probably worth doing. Maybe. I don't know though. Like my dad, like nobody's listening, right? My dad had kids, right? And I've known a lot of other guys who basically have kids. And there's this time when my dad went to the DMV and he, he took a photo and he looked really sad in his photo. And I remember as a kid asking my dad, like, why do you look so sad in your photo? And he's like, because I don't really have a lot of joy in my life. Like, I'm not, I'm kind of unhappy a lot of the time. And I'm like, well, fuck, like, if having two, my dad had a house and he had two kids. He was like really unhappy. And my mom treated him like shit. Like my mom, even to this day, my mom is just like, you one-eyed fool, go buy this, go buy that. And he's like, I'm just lucky to have her. And it's just fucking like, What's the point? That's the fucking thing. That's the fate of the dorky. The dorky dude, he gets bossed around by the by the fat wench. That's how it goes. Really? Yeah, that's how it fucking goes. And I'll, I'll take the matrix. What's the point? Anyway, that's it. That's the situation. Okay, Sean. Keep talking. Just, you gotta get through this. You gotta, you gotta talk your way into some positive shit. Alright, so anyway. Shovel out. I gotta get rid of the doom. So I'm gonna read the sheet. If I read the sheet, it kind of shovels out some of the doom. Alright, so what are we doing? Uh, basically, uh, let's say no one's watching this. No one's watching this, or I don't know if anyone's watching this. But I just want to note. There's this, there's this. Tambourine lady in Mary Poppins. This guy, that's that's a trope. That's what fucking happens. The dorky lame-o guy, he gets bossed around by the fat wench, and that's how it fucking goes. Really? Yeah, that's a meta narrative. That was basically like my dad, and that's a lot of, a lot of like, lame-o guys. They get like a fat wench who basically goes, "You fucking fool," and they go, uh, "What's your point?" Uh, the the wizard and never-ending story. It's just a tail, like that guy, that guy right there, that guy has my genetics. I don't know what that guy is, but that's like a type of human, and I have that genetics. He's got like little monocles, and he's like doing his little thing at his desk. That guy, he ends up with the fat wench, and there, there in the never-ending story, there's this guy like pontificating about like all of his little theories, and there's some like 
fat shrew who basically says, you fool, go take out the garbage. And that's what my dad was. And that's what a lot of, just the dorky lame guy, he's gonna get with like some overweight ethnic chicken who's gonna get fat wench and it's, it's hell. And they're just, they're just, there's a saying, what is that saying? Uh, you, you sought out security. What did uh, Churchill, Churchill said like, you 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 wanted peace and you wanted comfort and security and like and because you you succumb to your desire for comfort and security you get none something like that what did what is that quote i think that basically i think that's what happens is i think some guy is like i'm so lonely and then there's some vulture wench who's like like oh yeah you're lonely now i have like some person i can boss around and then she's like you'll be alone if you don't do my bidding that's literally what i saw with my parents and I just think like the guy should just be strong and just and just fucking die alone. Really, that's what I want to do. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's maybe there's comfort and security with the with the the, the fat wedge or the overweight ethnic chick. Just fucking do what you want. I don't know. But it would be cool to have like a fling with an overweight ethnic chick and not have her like boss you around your whole life. And so that's that's kind of what I maybe if I stay on the dating apps I can get that. What's the point? That's how it fucking is. Like, that's the... Nobody's listening, right? I know it's, like, fucked up, but I need to, like, keep it real. I'm not trying to... Nobody's watching this. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. But that's the fucking situation. If you don't believe me, I can go into my dating apps and I can show you. It's just single single moms, tattooed single moms, overweight ethnic girl or lady from Asia, and they want your fucking life. But occasionally, you can have, like, a fling with, like, somebody like that. And, but just that's as good as it gets and probably I won't even be able to get that anymore okay so that's the fucking situation okay so let's just we've described this situation we've touched on reality now let's just manage my mind really yeah I just want to feel good I want to like let's just think of some shit that'll make me feel good okay so here we go uh, what do you want to say okay so let's say no one's listening or I don't know if anyone's listening uh, so no one else really cares what I think or do but I should really care what I think or do Really? Yeah, what I think or do, it's not really going to affect the world much, but it'll definitely affect how I feel and what I do. So I should generally try to manage my mind and just think shit that makes me feel good and steer my brain away from the, the fucking brutal rocks of reality. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a lots of negative shit to focus on, but I have to consciously set my mind up in the morning and just try to direct it away from the rocks. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, so the, what, uh, maybe no one's watching right now. I don't know if anyone's watching. But that's just my imagination. Whatever I speculate about people watching, that's all in my head. There's no, there's no evidence that I have anybody watching me right now, and so I have to just remember that's just my imagination. Really? Yeah. All I know is I know that I'm talking to myself. That's all I really know for sure. And I know that um, I just leave the the unknowns as I don't know. What are the facts? All right, so just the facts. I leave the I leave the I don't know as I don't know. So from morning till night, or for the rest of my life, I want to regularly ask myself, hey, Sean, what are you doing right now? And then I want to say to myself, do you want to be doing that? And then if the answer is no, try to stop doing the things that you don't want to be doing. Or just if I do something, I'm like, dude, that was really awful. Try to like not do that again. <laughs> What's the point? Like I just said this like rant. I have to talk about reality every now and then, but what's going on? But basically, I should avoid that. Hey, stop! Dogs out! Dogs out! Out! Basically, if I say a bunch of depressing shit, it usually feels bad afterwards. <laughs> Let's try to, like, not do that again. But I gotta fucking talk out my bullshit. Anyway, okay, so what? So basically, I should just say, like, hey, Sean, what are you doing right now? And then, what did you- did you like that? Do you want to be doing that? If the answer is no, try to stop doing that, or don't do it again. And then uh, try to just say, hey, what do you want to do? And then just try to do that at whatever lane level you can do it. Really, that's kind of all I want to do. It's just like, just think, what do I want to do? How can I get myself to do it at whatever level I can do it? And just, did I like it? Do I feel good? Then do that. Just that but I don't want to get roped into a bunch of things that I don't want to do. Because that's not good. <laughs> really, yeah. Oh, what else? Uh, 
hey, uh, if you if I can't even attempt to do what I want, I should just go to sleep. That's a red flag. Let your conscience be your guide. Leave the item as is. I don't know. Ask ChatGPT or credible sources for answers. Um, what do I know? Well, I do know that there's sights and sounds going into my eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. So, I don't know, maybe there's a god and stuff. Who knows? But there's a lot of things I don't know. But what I do know is the sights and there seem to be sights and sounds going into my eyes and ears. And I know what I want to think and what I want to do. And I just want to try to deal with that, mostly. Um, racist and misogynist is as racist and misogynist does. Um, right, so if you if you don't if I want to be a racist or misogynist, I shouldn't say racist or misogynist stuff. I'm not trying to be a teacher, I'm just trying to lead myself. Uh, why do it publicly? Because I get off on it. Uh, because it, it's just, I gotta get rid of loneliness, basically. I have to get rid of loneliness, and so I just keep thinking, like, isn't everybody doing this? Like, how, do you, how do you not do this? How do you just sit in a room in silence forever? Or just fucking let some fat wench take over your fucking life? That's what my dad did. That's fucking horrible. Really, yeah, it's a fate worse than death. I'll take this. Uh, sustainable, enjoyable grind. What's the point? Don't say misogynistic stuff. That's how it fucking is. Like, I'm not trying to be a misogynist, but I'm just saying that, like, if I could just show you, like, the reality on my dating apps, that's how it fucking is. And that's, like, I'm kind of saying, like, to the world, like, isn't that, like, how everybody else is? Like, right, that's the fucking rules now. It's like, the game is, like, locked up. There's no... Like, there used to, nobody's listening, right? But you used to be able to find, like, a diamond in the rough. It, back, like, ten years ago, before people knew what everybody really thought, you could kind of find somebody who didn't really know stuff. Like, you could find somebody, they didn't really know what they, what they could get. They didn't know their, like, market value. And now everything's just fucking, like, market value is ironclad. You're not gonna, like, get around it. And so, what's my point? Just the fuck, basically, like, Get the point, Chun. Just, it seems to be the case. It seems to be the case that the fucking rules are if you're like an older dude, if you go onto the dating apps, if she's like a hot chick, she's gonna want like a lot of money. Otherwise, she, she'd just be with some other young hot person. And then uh, the options are like single mom. Single mom usually has a tattoo for some reason. And then, uh, don't talk about this, Chun. And then like, just, fucking overweight ethnic girls and just there's tons of them I don't explain it it's I could show you if I could show you my phone I don't want to reveal people's identity but it's always it's not it's all overweight ethnic girls and ladies from Asia and it's the same type of people like it's like I'm not trying to overgeneralize but there's this Asian lady who looks kind of like an alien and she shows herself with in front of like a horse stable or something like that or there's some columns and like hedges and stuff she shows like a nice like pretty background and she has like nice jockey clothing or something and she looks like an alien and there's thousands of them there's thousands of them on, on my dating house and then there's this overweight ethnic girl who's like it's they're so they're all overweight ethnic girls like it's all overweight ethnic girl single mom or that lady from asia across the board and then every once in a while some like basically hot basically a hot a, a young hot white chick who's kind of like you have to like pay for me and she's waiting for me to like say like i'll give you all my money and then she's that's kind of her life plan is like to find some like older guy to like pay for and the game is like locked up and you're not gonna like i've been doing this for like four years there's no way around that there's no like diamond in the rough anymore but like 10 years ago you could find like a diamond in the rough you could find some like basically hot chick who was just kind of like she had like a drug problem and she was like oh i don't know like I guess you're kind of cool, but now that woman is gonna like, she's gonna get her, she's gonna get what she can get, and she can, she knows her options, because nobody even like socializes, nobody like does things randomly anymore, they just are gonna go onto the market and find their value, and they're gonna get what they can get. And what's the point, just basically my time is not, my time is more valuable to me than I can get in exchange for it, and there's no way around that anymore. And so I just have to like please myself, and so let's just keep doing that. And so when I use the, my goal is like when I use the dating apps, I have to minimize the amount of time that I obsess over it. And I have to get better at that. And it's hard, it's hard. The, the fucking, the, the gravity of the vagina. 
on like your brain. Just having open dating apps is like it's like sucking my brain and just being like pussy, potential pussy, but it's it's never it's never worth it anymore. Really, yeah, it's just it's not really possible anymore. Anyway, case closed. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the I'm gonna use the, the force of potential pussy to get myself to show off and do some workout, and that's as good as it gets. Use the force of potential pussy. Don't let the pussy use you. <laughs> yeah, okay, what else? Uh, sustainable, enjoyable grind. So make it fun, don't make it unnecessarily awful. Whatever works, keep it simple, whatever works. Uh, right, so don't make things unnecessarily awful. So anyway, now that I've like said this like 50 million times, I shouldn't have to say it anymore. Yeah, that's that's what's on my mind. No one cares. Yeah, I don't. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's try to not say this shit anymore. Um, okay, so don't corrupt the youth. Yeah, no one's watching this. But if somebody's watching this, just get a job and go go get a wife. And, you know, money, money, pussy. That's that's what you should go get when you're get it while you're young. Uh, king keys to kingdom. Could you remember who has the keys to kingdom? Uh, avoid alcohol. Oh god, I feel sick. I feel sick. No one cares. Uh, no soul mantra. What's the no soul mantra? Uh, in a world where everything is constantly changing and interconnected, the only thing that makes anything seem... I got a mosquito bite. Uh, the only thing that makes anything seem separate or stable is a word. A word creates an imaginary border around what is otherwise a constantly flowing, interconnected everything. What does that shit mean? It just means I don't think there's a soul. I think there's, I think there's just words, and words make entities out of stuff that you could otherwise think of as multiple things or part of a greater whole. But I don't think there's a soul. It doesn't seem like there's a soul. Because like if you get brain damage, what happened to your soul? And if you die and you go to heaven, what happened to your soul? Like does the brain damage version go to heaven? Or does the five year old version go to heaven? What's the point? It just seems like it comes from a word. It seems like people think in terms of words. And uh, it's not that word, the, the thing isn't just a word. What's your point? I want to go kill this mosquito. Maybe I should just spend the morning killing this mosquito. There's a mosquito somewhere in my room, and I want to just kill it. Let me just spend a minute trying to find this fucking mosquito. Let's find the mosquito. <laughs> Think there's a soul, but right now I'm gonna think there's a soul. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's a soul. But I don't know, when I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm going to think there's a soul. But right now, I don't think there's a soul. And that makes the world make more sense to me because, um, because if I think there's a soul, then I start to think, like, like, what's my nature or just, I don't know. It just seems like shit fucking changes and the idea of a soul kind of muddies with that. What's the point? Also, it just makes me think, like, well, what happens to you if you die? Like, if you think there's a soul, now you have this thing where it's like, well, where do I go when I die? Like... Am I going to go into infinite blackness? And I just think there's not a you. There's not like a you. There's just fucking... There's kind of shit happening. What's more? I just think there's sights and sounds going into eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. And there doesn't have to be like a you. There's no like... There's no ghost in the machine. And the, the thing that you think of as you is really obviously like... 
it's it's interconnected with its surroundings. Like if you had different sights and sounds going into your eyes and ears, you would be saying totally different shit. Like I didn't make up any of these words that I'm saying. Which point? I just think that that seems like obvious. So I'm trying to tell myself to just. I just think that that people are more interconnected with their surroundings than the words suggest. The words suggest that people are these little bubble entities and so I'm just like I think you guys are all ridiculous I think, I think talking about some person as though they're they're this separate thing that's not interconnected with the surroundings that goes somewhere when they die that seems just ridiculous and it seems like it's a function of words it seems like my mom said you're Sean you know what she says that's you you are this person who's like driving the car of your brain it doesn't make it doesn't I don't think there has to be a you I think there's just there's just sights and sounds going, like before my parents told me there was a me, there was just sights and sounds going to my eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. And now I just think with all these, with all this talking, there's just more elaborate versions of that. And I, but I think when somebody says, well, what happens to me when I die? The mistake is thinking that there's some sort of like separate me. I was listening to that yesterday. There was a thing on Philosophy's podcast where they, there's philosophy podcasts where they said like, like they think that there's like the material world and then there's some sort of like non-material world of like the spirit world. And I think that comes from words because words are not like real things. Words are kind of like imagined things. And so they make this mistake of thinking there's a you and then they think the you is some sort of separate soul thing. And I think it's just the reason they can't find a you is because it's a word. The you is a word, but what you're talking about when you say you is basically shit that's kind of interconnected with its surroundings and it's changing and just, that's the way things seem to me. So I'm just saying that because I'm going to listen to all this shit and people are going to confuse me and I'll be like, that's the way it seems to me. But when I listen to Joel Osteen, I'll believe his shit. And I think there's just thoughts. I think there's thoughts. And so like, there's the physical real world and then there's like a lot of thoughts about that world but the thoughts aren't really real but the thoughts make you feel and do stuff and so i just generally want to try to think and do stuff that i want but yeah that's it so i don't know there's sights and sounds coming into my eyes and ears and i want to remind myself that i can make my own sights and sounds and that's what i'm doing that's what i'm doing this morning is i can like leave it to chance i can just let the thoughts just kind of randomly float in my head or i can just like create my own thoughts like right now what i'm doing is i'm I'm creating my own thoughts with my tongue. I'm creating my own sights and sounds and thoughts rather than just leaving it like willy nilly. And that seems, it seems crazy to do otherwise. Like basically if I read this thing, I've got a bunch of thoughts in my head that make me feel good for pretty much the rest of the day, or they give me ways to counter the negative thoughts. And if I don't do that, like how would I think otherwise? Like how would I just, how would I expect to just randomly just stumble into like good thoughts? You're gonna stumble into some bad thoughts. And if, if you're not like armed, with some way to counter those thoughts because you forgot how to counter them, you're gonna sit with some bad thoughts. And I just seem like that's kind of seems like all this. That's kind of what seems to be happening in my world. And this, I don't know, yeah. Anyway, but there's other shit too. Uh, whatever, don't don't fall for superstition. What does that mean? Yeah, just if I start doing some superstitious shit, I'm just gonna do the opposite just to counter it. I'm just be like, ah, it's just fucking superstition. It's fine. Uh, yeah, when in doubt, relax, breathe, and let things pass by without judgment, and just let somebody else figure it out. Really? Yeah, just, I'm going to say a bunch of shit that's going to make sense, but sometimes I'm just going to be like, I don't know, whatever, just, I'm just going to relax, breathe, some shit happened, somebody said some stuff, I said some stuff, maybe it's all bullshit, just, whatever, somebody else will figure it out, I'm going to just, in the meantime, I'm going to relax, breathe, and let things pass by without judgment. That's a good default. Okay, what else? Uh... So you're not your thoughts. The world is not your thoughts and your feelings, and we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeah. What's the point? Uh, right, so I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a mind reader. What do you mean, Sean? Well, I got this little sheet that I read every day, and I remind myself that uh, the world is not words. Thinking in terms of words creates some problems, because for one thing, it makes you think that it's just one thing, but it's not just one thing, it's many things. And, uh, what's your point, Sean? Yeah, basically, um, the world is not words, so there's always a positive counter thought I can think, and it's not just one thing. Whatever I think of as one thing, it's not just that thing. The, the word is gonna suggest, you're just a this, or it's just that. It's not just that, like, there's, 
multiple interpretations and so I should consciously try to think of three positive interpretations if I want to feel good. About, there's a way to feel good about that thing or there's a way to feel good about myself and if I just consciously try to think three positive things about myself, if I feel bad about, if I think I'm bad, just uh, try to think about three ways in which you're good and I can always do that. Those, the ways to think of it as good are always available but it takes work to like shovel out the random interpretation. So at some point, just there's, on an ongoing basis, there's every day, there's gonna be a voice in my head or a voice from the outside world that says something to the effect of you're bad and that thing you're doing is bad or that other person is bad. And I, it's not just bad, there's a way to think of it as good, but I have to like think of it. So if somebody says like, I think you're a jerk, you say, yeah, but you probably also think I'm tall. You probably also think I have a good head of hair. You probably also think I'm good at art. You're just not saying those. So the word, the word, the world doesn't just have one interpretation. There's lots of things you could focus on, but in a competitive world, people are usually gonna provide various versions of you're bad and that thing you're doing is bad. And just any one of those can like make me feel bad for like whole day. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not just that. So there's, there's good stuff too. And that's the whole thing. It's basically people are mixed bags. So the same thing applies for other people. Like if I think about some other person, I'll be like, oh, they're just an asshole. They're not just an asshole. There's good stuff about them too. And I'm gonna try to focus on the good stuff for everybody, it's, I'm not just, I know that they're not just this, they're not just like this bad thing. There's something bad about everybody and I can sit with that or I can just think like, oh yeah, there's good stuff about them too. So I'm gonna always remember that there's, there's like three positive counter thoughts to any of the negative thoughts and I just have to do the work and I have to just, I mean, I don't have to, but if, other, if I don't do the work, I'm just sit with a negative thought. And so I'll just try, if I wanna feel good about, there's a way to think of that thing is good or that person is good or that activity is good. And if I do that, then I'll feel good because it's not absolutely good or bad. Also, that thing can be thought of as multiple things. So a person is really multiple things. They're not one thing all the time. So if somebody says like, are you an artist? I don't know, not all the time necessarily. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I do some art. If somebody says like, you should do physical stuff. I do that too, I do that too. Some things are not mutually exclusive. Sometimes you can do the other thing later um, people are mixed bags over time. They do all sorts of shit. And so the shit changes. Like I should remember that like my interpretation is going to change over time. So if I'm, there's going to be some days where I just have like a bunch of negative interpretations and they're just festering on my mind. That seems to be the, basically the way my brain works is there's some like little scrabble letters. There's scrabble letters that I'm using to interpret the world. And it's kind of usually like the same world. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, dude, I thought it was good, but now I think it's bad. And then I'm like, well, I thought it was good before. I'll I'll see it as a good again later. But right now, the things in my lo the things loaded in my recent memory are a bunch of negative interpretations, and I'm just gonna have to sit with those, and, and those are gonna taint my analysis of life. And then I'll forget. I'll forget about the negative thing, and then I'll I'll be like, wait, like it's actually good. And they'll be like, yeah, it's good. It's not really good or bad. You just have some words that you're using that are lingering in your head that you're thinking about and analyzing the world with and those change. And so I can either like try to change those by thinking about the good stuff or just know that like when I go to sleep after a few days, I'll see it as good later. The, in the interpretation will change over time depending on the, the recent words that have floated into my brain. And sometimes there'll just be so many negative words coming into my head and they'll linger in my memory for like the whole day that I'm probably just gonna feel bad for like the whole day or like a few days. They'll pass, they'll pass. I know how this goes. It's like three days later, I'll be like, hey, it's not, it's good. Now I'll, I'll analyze it. I'll come up with, I'll remember more ways in which it's good. And that's just, that's like an ongoing thing. Okay, so what else? But it's not like absolutely good or bad. <sighs> what else? Um, but there's always ways to think of the good. There's always ways to think of the bad. And you can like consciously do that. But if you deal with other people, they're gonna, they're gonna provide various versions of, you're bad and you're like, I thought it was bad. But now I think it's good. It's not absolutely good or bad. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, mind reading, so I'm not a mind reader, so uh, I should remind myself that if I start tripping out thinking, those people are thinking this and that, that's always just me thinking shit. Um, but I, ultimately, I'm not a mind reader. I'm also not a fortune teller. What does that mean? So if I start tripping out thinking like, I know this thing in the future is gonna be bad, I don't know the future. So I should assume that that person is thinking something good and that thing in the future is good until I know the facts. Because my brain is usually gonna fill in the blank with uh, something bad and that's just my imagination. I'm not a fortune teller, I'm not a mind reader. Uh, catastrophize, don't catastrophize. So if I start tripping out thinking like, oh, like 
I I have a tumor. It's a that thing on Google Image. It's it's like the thing on my foot. It's probably a tumor. It's not a tumor. You're just tripping out. I'm always kind of tripping, especially if I'm tired or emotionally overwhelmed. Just go to sleep. Get more sleep. And then in the morning, just talk to an expert before you jump to conclusion. What else? Emotional reasoning. I'm, my emotion's not the truth, so uh, try not to make emotional decisions. Labels. What's that? Uh, stupid is as stupid does. Criminal is as criminal does. So if I commit a crime, I'm not permanently a criminal. But if I do some good thing, I'm not permanently a good guy either. You just got to keep doing shit. You're not permanently a thing. You can just do shit. But if you don't even try to do the thing because you think that you're a thing, that's a pain in the ass. So if, if I commit a crime and then I try to be a good person, it says, don't try to be a good person. You know you're just a criminal. And you go, they're right. Who am I? Who am I to do a good thing? I'm just a criminal. No, you're not a fucking label. Like You can just do whatever you can physically do. It doesn't have to have anything to do with what you previously did. But if you want to be a thing, you got to keep doing that thing. So if you want to be an artist, you got to keep doing art. You're not an artist by default. If you want to be a good guy, you got to keep doing good stuff. You're not a good guy by default. But just do shit. Do shit. But like, you can just do whatever you can physically do. And then if you can't do that thing that you can physically do, I'm not sure you can really be blamed for it. Really? Yeah, I like that idea too. It's just basically like, you should just, if somebody says like, you're a bad thing, or if that voice in your head says, you're a, you're just a, you're just an asshole. And you go, oh no, am I an asshole? How do I know if I'm really an asshole? Can I change? Can I change from being an asshole? And if the voice or the other person says, no, once an asshole, always an asshole. You'd be like, well then, how can I be blamed for it? I can't change, I was born that way, that's just my nature. It's like calling a retarded person retarded. How can you, uh, how can you beat yourself up for it if you can't even change? How can it be, it's, you can't be blamed for it if you can't change. But then if somebody says, well no, you could change. Well then I'm just acting, I'm just acting. But I'll change later. Either you can change, in which case it's all good. You can change later and you're just acting. You're not permanently that thing. But if you're permanently that thing, and there's nothing you can do about it, then you shouldn't beat yourself up and you can't even really be blamed for it because you can't do shit about it. So in either case, I think it's good to just not really fret about it. Really? Yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, personalization, what does that mean? Uh, so yeah, it's, I think it's good to not have regret. So isn't it true that a lot of uh, the top scientists say that there's probably no free will and me and all the other people probably couldn't have chosen any differently than what they did? Don't a lot of the smartest people studying that subject think that that, that could likely be true? Yes. yes. But isn't it also true that a lot of the top scientists, they think that you, you, you could have free will and maybe you really could choose different than what you did? Yes. yes. So different, that's, I'm always trying to remind myself. Different people think different shit, and those people, they also think different shit. Like, they didn't, they weren't born thinking any of these things. And ultimately, it's just fucking thoughts. There's just physical reality. I love that idea. There's just, there's physical reality, and then there's like a bunch of like, should I have done different? Like, was that God's will? Maybe I should have done different. That's good, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a lot of like blah, 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 blah. But the blah, 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 blah doesn't really change like the physical reality. So that shit in the past, you can like think about it however you want. It's not gonna change what the fuck happened, but it'll change how you feel. So like different people think different shit and they didn't always think that shit. So you can also think like different shit. You can think different shit at different times. That person who thinks there's free will, it doesn't like really matter what they think in terms of like, that's what fucking happened, but it affects how you feel. So you should just think the shit that like makes you feel good and not depressed, but then you can switch. You can switch if somebody says like, are you a determinist? Or are you a free will believer? Or are you a Christian? I don't know, not all the time. Can I change? Can I switch to your philosophy? Yeah, if you switch to my philosophy, your whole life would be different. Okay, well I change for a while, but then I'm gonna switch to the other thing. And they might say like, no, no, you can't switch that fast. It's just thoughts. Like they just think there's basically thoughts running through your head and you can just think the shit that makes you, I think you should just think the, sh the right shit for the right effect. Like you should just think the thing that makes you not be depressed or think the thing that makes you motivated, or think the thing that like, just, uh, just whatever philosophy fucking works. So what's the So just like when I'm on my deathbed, I'm gonna be thinking like, there's definitely a god, and I'm definitely going to heaven. But right now, I think like, oh, I don't, don't really think there's a god. And you can just switch, and it's easier to switch again if you don't think that you're a thing. And so I think there's just habits of like thought and action. And I like to remember that like, it's easier to think different shit and do different shit if you remember that you're not like a label. So I'm not like a determinist. I'm not a believer. When I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm a believer. I'm gonna believe in God. I'm gonna, how many times do you have to pray to God to like officially be a believer? 
There's no like official designation. It's just thought. Really? Yeah, I don't even have to. Like, I can. It's not even just me saying this shit. Like, in terms of being like officially a believer in God, there's no like official designation. You can't like analyze somebody's cells and tell that they really are a believer or not. I mean, like, really, like, if you pray to God and you you talk to God and you think about going to heaven and you think all that stuff related to the Bible, that's kind of like believing in God and being a Christian, right? I mean, that's that's kind of what thinking is. It's like there's some thoughts going through your head, but there's no way to measure like when whether you're like a you know an official believer in God or something like that, because you weren't always that. It's just kind of thoughts going through your head. Is that true? Yeah. That's, That's correct. correct. It's just thoughts. There's just like a bunch of thoughts, and if you have like a lot of thoughts that precede the other thoughts, and you think those on a regular basis, and you say something like, I believe that, that's it. That's just, that's as thinking as it gets. And like, I just think it's just habits. It's just habits of thoughts. And so I want to be flexible in my habits and just be like, I don't know, sometimes I believe in God if that's useful. And basically, if it's in the past, and if, if I'm beating myself up, I say, ah, there's no free will. I forgive myself. We probably, a lot of the top scientists, they say there's probably no free will. And so I forgive myself. I forgive that other person. But then when I think about the future, there's free will. I change my mind. I'm a free will believer. So you can just, I think it's just thought. You should use the appropriate thought for the appropriate effect. Yeah, you can do that. Because you didn't, none of those people, they didn't always think that shit. And the, the thoughts are going to change. And you can just like keep thinking, keep thinking like new shit. But you don't control the field. And so eventually somebody will say, no, 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 that's not how it is. And then you'll be like, oh, maybe they're right. They're not right. They didn't think that shit all the time either. What's more, it's just fucking thoughts. It's just thoughts. You should just run the thoughts through your head on a regular basis that like make you feel good. And occasionally you'll encounter some other people who say, no, it's some different shit. It's fucking, that's not true. And then you go, oh, maybe you're right. But really like people think different shit. Like that's Jordan Peterson thinks one thing. Sam Harris thinks some other thing. So you too could all, just the fact that different people think different shit means that you can also think different shit at different times. So what's my point? It's just fucking thoughts. It's just fucking thoughts. The thoughts don't change like the physical reality, but they do change how you feel and what you do. So I think you should just think the shit that makes you feel good and does good stuff. So whatever the, whatever thought works for the fucking, for the right situation. Yeah. Okay. So what else? Uh, so overgeneralizing, uh, so if I think like everybody sucks or like I always do that bad thing, um, I, it doesn't fit into that neat little package. It's not that simple. So if I start thinking like everybody sucks or I always do that bad thing, if I think about it, sometimes I do some good stuff and it's good to recalibrate. It's good to remember. Uh, uh, what else? Just I want to think about the positive. So I want to recalibrate and remember what are three things I'm grateful for? If I'm focused on like what I don't have, I'll be like, I lack these things. Like, I don't have, like, a good job. I don't have a good girlfriend. <laughs> and so what's the point? I'll be like, I, my life is terrible. But really, if I think about it, I have no cancer and I'm not starving. And I have all my limbs. I win already. I have the best stuff already. Having no cancer and having all your limbs and not starving is, like, the best. I'll take that over a uh, dream job or dream girlfriend. <laughs> really? Yeah, I have the best stuff already. Anything else is bonus. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's basically it. Um... Uh, Fucking mosquito bite. Fucking mosquito bite. Anyway, uh, what else? Uh, should, don't get caught in other people's shoulds. What does that mean? So yeah, I've got to remind myself that the darkest times in my life are usually times when I can't get myself to do the shit that I want to do. I just want to like write down, like this is what I want to do with my day. And if I can't even do it, that's a real pain in the ass. And so I just want to think the shit that makes me do what I want to do. And so some of the darkest times in my life are when somebody basically says, like, you shouldn't do that thing that you want to do. You should do something that, like, serves my interests or confirms my way of life. And I'll, if I go, they're right. I should do what you say. What I'm doing. Basically, people are going to try to say, like, you should do what serves them. And if I do that, it's fucking misery. And if I start to load my day with a bunch of shit that I don't want to do, and I'm like, dude, how did I get roped into this shit that I don't want to do? It's because somebody said, you should do this thing that, like... I say you should do and usually that's because that person wants money or they want uh, they just you're doing something that doesn't confirm their way of life and they don't really care they're just gonna try to they just want what they want people want what they want and if you let them they'll fucking eat you if they can but just you gotta just 
be like, I gotta protect my time because uh, you don't get your time back. And so the biggest regret, the biggest regret of people on their deathbed is getting roped into other people's stuff and siphoning away their time on some shit that some other person said they should do. Can you substantiate that? Isn't it the, the number one regret of people on their deathbed is living according to other people's desires or other people's expectations? Yeah. Yes. yes. Very, very easy to have that happen. It's, I've had that happen a lot in my life. Suddenly somebody says, you're bad. Basically, there's an ongoing thing where somebody's, somebody's going to say, you're bad, and that thing you're doing is bad, and they're saying, you should do this other thing. And then if I do that, I'm just like, dude, like I just lost like a year of my life. And I'm like, dude, I don't even like this. How did this happen? Oh, this person said like, you're wrong and you're bad and you should go do this thing that I say you should do. And I'll be like, okay. And then it's like, dude, like you don't get your fucking time back. They don't even care either. What's the point? Yeah, what's the point? Uh, yeah, it's basically it. You don't get your time back. Uh, what else? Uh, three to ten. So basically for the rest of my life, I just want to say like, what do I want to do? And how can I do it? And there's some lame level I can do it at. And I want to not compare, really. Yeah. So there's an ongoing thing where, like, if I if I compare to some level way higher, that might make me think of my thing as bad. And so I have to think of my thing as good, and I have to think of it. There's a way to think of it as good, but a way to think of it as bad is comparing. So like, there's infinite comparisons. Even those people who are really good at something, there's some way they could compare to something further along or better that makes them feel pathetically bad. Just don't compare to them yet. Don't don't ever just if there was like a dung beetle, if there was a dung beetle working on his little dung pile and suddenly he realized how insignificant his life was compared to like some guy who's like in like a penthouse apartment with a bunch of supermodels. If he suddenly if the dung if the guy with the penthouse said, Dude, your life is so pathetic, like you're just rolling this little dung beetle in the cracks of the New York City streets. The dung beetle, he doesn't even know that shit. But if he knew that, he might be like, Dude, my life is so insignificant I should just kill myself no that's your life like that's you really love that like that's what you want to do right that's your life but there's there's a version of that for everybody like if all these people doing their things just give it like 300 years and if they compare themselves to like genetically engineered people or artificially intelligent people it's all gonna seem like dung beetle stuff but that's your fucking dung beetle and to that dung beetle he's gonna have some little magic in his life he's gonna watch the sunset he's gonna be like I made my fucking dung heap and I feel proud of myself and the other dung beetles will be like, dude, that was fucking awesome. It is awesome, but if you compare, there's some way to compare that'll make you feel like, oh, it's so insignificant. Just don't compare to that. That's not your life. That's not the lot you were given. Just, you just want to, all we have to do is decide what the time, do with the time you're given. And there's a way to think of it as good, but there's lots of ways to think of it as bad. And one way to think of it as bad is comparing. And just don't compare, don't compare to that. That's, that's not your lot. That's not your mission. <laughs> Yeah, okay, what else? Uh, assertion, so people are gonna assert superiority. Somebody's gonna say something to the effect of like, you, you're just a passenger, I'm a driver, and you, should, you shouldn't be like, they're right, who am I? Who am I to be a, pa a driver? I'm just a passenger. But wait a minute, like, I, if I wanna drive, I'm gonna drive. But it's just, people are gonna assert superiority, but don't let them relegate you to, to not, you have the same freedoms as them, so you can still like do whatever you can physically do, and that you can legally do. And if you wanna do that, you should do it. Don't think that you don't have the same freedoms as them. What else? Emerson. So just do it bad. There's going to be some version of like, uh, you're bad. Last resort, like there's a way to think of that thing you're doing as good. But then last resort is just do it bad. Do it bad. Who says you have to do it good? Just do it lame. Do it old. Do it pathetic. But do what you want to do. There's some lame level I can do it at. And I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try to think of it as good by thinking like, well, it's better than what I did yesterday or last year. But... If, if the voice eventually says, just, you're bad, well, then I guess I'm bad, but I'm doing what I want to do, and so, uh, yeah, really, yeah, just do it bad, who says you have to be good at something to do it, if you enjoy it, then it's good, because you enjoy it, and it's what you want to do, but there's always a way to think of it as bad, but just try to think of it as good, but then last resort, just do it bad, do it lame, do it, do it at whatever level you can do it, but do what you want, uh, what else, or not, I don't know, whatever, that's what I want to do, uh, even if it's a, even if I'm a bad thing, it's better to be a bad thing doing that good thing than just being the bad thing. So even if that voice says like you're bad, just be like, well, if I'm some bad thing, let's be that plus doing the good activity. That's better than just being the bad thing. So let's let's be a. I don't know what the fuck I am, but if that voice says like you're a bad thing, okay, but let's be a bad thing doing the the trying hard 
thing that potentially makes my life better and brings me joy. That's better than just being the bad thing and not doing that shit. So let's just do the fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, what else? Shit. Uh, happy accidents can be good. Don't go nuts. Uh, sometimes shit's not gonna be perfect. I'm having like a bad day today because 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 uh, there's nothing but overweight ethnic chicks and single moms on my dating app, and it's fuck it, It's always the same lady from Asia. It's just a, there's so many like. Nobody's listening, like, just the whole fucking, if you're like a washed up middle age, you're not just a washed up middle age, I know, but just like, for the last like four years, just the dating options are just single mom, this, it's the same type of people, single mom, lady from Asia, who's like, she has the same background, it's the same background, the same clothing, it's really weird, and then, uh, Overweight ethnic girl, and it's the same type of overweight ethnic girl, really, it's just the fucking, that's how it is, that's my life. No, which it's not your life. That's that's the dating world. So just stay off the dating apps, and just enjoy your life, and just expect that there's no more, uh, no more good dating options. Really, it happens eventually to everybody. Okay, just uh, sexy times are for sexy people. Sexy people are in their twenties and thirties, and when you're in that time, you should get married because it's not, it's it's not fun being a forty-something at the singles bar. Yeah, so just try to avoid the singles bar too much, huh? Uh, okay, what? Just change the channel. So you can always change the channel. Um, battle against chaos. So I want to remind myself that the world is kind of like a battle against chaos. Uh, I have these various types of sandcastles. I'm working on my jujitsu. I'm, I'm trying to maintain a jujitsu habit. I want to keep going to jujitsu, which is kind of hard for me to do. I want to go running regularly. I want to do sculpture, which is kind of hard for me to do. And then I want to do maintain my drawing skills. And I want to work out all of these things. Just assume the world's gonna try to disperse them. The world's gonna cope. Like, ah, come on, it's too hard. That was yesterday. We should just give up. Like, ah, come on, I forget my goal. No, stick to your fucking thing. And if you can grind away your thing for like a year or like five years, you could get to the next level of your video game just for a spirit of adventure. And if you stick to your thing, if you grind away your thing, over the days or over the weeks, you're gonna have like down days, you're gonna have down weeks. Things are gonna be sort of like not so good. Stick to your fucking thing. Do it at whatever level you can do it. And if you check back on your progress after like a year, you'll you'll progress. Especially if you're genetically talented at the thing. But even if you're not, like you can get you can get better at your thing if you grind away for like a long time. But if you keep changing and if you just quit after a few days, you don't really get to the next level of your thing. So it's nice to just to get to it's for a feeling of progress. It's nice to kind of like have these snowballs and keep rolling your snowball through the ups and downs. Don't jump ship, just pick a few stocks and stick with them for like 30 years. You can diversify or you can go all in on the thing that you're talented at. But if you keep rolling your snowball for like 30 years, you could have a really good thing. And why try to make your thing better? I don't know, might as well try to make your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Or I try to do anything. I don't know, might as well try to make your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Really? Yeah. So even if you quit, if you put your snowball down for a while and it starts to melt and somebody says, ah, you're a quitter, you're not a quitter, you can always get back on the horse. And uh, you're never out of the fight. Uh, what else? until you're dead. But as long as you have breath to breathe, you can do what you, all we have to do is to type, you can keep doing your thing as long as you're alive. Uh, what else? The more you do a thing, the more you can do that thing. If you wanna win, you should probably go all in. If you wanna just play, you can do different things throughout the day. When in doubt, avoid unnecessary conflict. Really? Yeah, every day, I use that every day. I'll see some person and I'll be like, fuck that guy, he's not getting the better of me. Don't care, don't wanna care, just be like, just. Just do the thing that avoids unnecessary conflict. Uh, keep it simple. Yeah, avoid being a drama queen. Don't make things super serious or a big deal. Anything in life that you've recently regarded as bad. Yeah, just uh, it seems like I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get laid with anybody that I'm attracted to ever again because I'm an old person. What's the point? What are three ways in which that could be a good thing? Well, I don't have to think, I can do things just for the joy of it. So I can live kind of like a kid without having everything be corrupted by like potential pussy. Let's just say whatever I do, I'm just getting older. And so I should just do things for the joy rather than be like, oh, maybe this will get pussy. Yeah, what else is good? Just, I don't know. Um, yeah, also like, you won't have to pay for kids. Kids can be very expensive. What else? And you won't have to do all that driving. You don't have to drive to that place. You don't have to go to that event. You get your freedom. Really? Yeah. And you can jerk off to super hot chicks on your phone until you're dead. 
And those super hot chicks on the phone, you don't have to drive them anywhere. As soon as you orgasm, you can just throw the phone next to your bed and go to sleep. Really? Yeah, no, you don't have to pay for dinner or anything. Okay, what else? Slow down enough to do it right. If I'm tired or emotionally overwhelmed, don't rush. Um, and just, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, don't touch Tinder. I should really use Tinder when I go to sleep. I think thinking about it early in the morning is not good. So let's try to do that. Not in the morning. Let's try that. So to tonight I'm gonna use Tinder before I go to sleep, but then I'm not, I'm gonna make a point to just, once I'm like totally spent, then I can like trip out about like potential pussy, but it's such a waste of time. That just wait until all your time is like used up and then you can like waste some time on Tinder. All right, what else? Uh, emotional, so um, I'm gonna say some negative shit. No one's listening. I'm really gonna die, really, as sure as tomorrow. I don't have forever, so whatever I wanna do, um, I should try to do it soon. And uh, But slow is fast, don't rush through things, but eventually I'm really gonna die, right? For sure, this isn't like a dream I'm gonna wake up from. I'm gonna turn into dust and be gone forever uh, after, um, you know, just a, a certain amount of time that's probably less than 100 years. Yes. yes. Yeah. So if I'm a if I'm a 44 year old male, you know I could I could be dead in 30 years, right? It just based on 30 or 40 years based on average life expectancy. Yes. yes. So it's not even guaranteed. I mean, I could die tomorrow, but basically, for sure, I'm going to be dead. And flash forward. 60 years, I think you could say for sure I'm dead or as good as dead. What's the point? Just I'm really going to die. Really, really, no joke, as sure as tomorrow, as real as this microphone, as sure as the next morning. Enough of those mornings, I'm going to be gone, worm food, dissolved. And that's a, that's just true. This is not like a dream I'm going to wake up from. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's how it fucking is. Which point? So that reminds me that uh, most of the world is not me. Almost all of the world is not me. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Almost all of life is not me. And uh, if I want to be nice to people, I should remember that they're they're all my. Uh, everybody's my. Everybody could. Er, any person that I see is somebody's son, mother, father, or daughter. And so if I want to be nice to people, I should remember that. And we all share common ancestors. But sometimes it's easier to help other people than to help myself. And so if I can do that with no skin off my back, cool. But I'm not sending money to that lady in Africa anymore because I don't want to get a job. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. And I don't want to turn my life upside down for some stranger because they'd fucking eat you if they could. Really, yeah, that person, she, that stra those strangers, they don't really give a shit about you. She's not giving me any money. She could have... She, yeah, what's the point? Just... Uh, People care way more about their selfish shit than they do about the lives of strangers, and you and I are strangers to most people. Can you substantiate that? Isn't it true that uh, you could buy a Toyota that would get you from point A to point B for thirty thousand dollars less than, you know, like uh, one of the higher priced Teslas? Yes. yes. Isn't it true that for $30,000, you could pretty certainly save lives of starving people in Africa? Yes. So people are going to rationalize that how they will, but what that basically says is that uh, just people care way more about their, their selfish luxury stuff than they do about the lives of strangers. And because that's how their actions are. I mean, they could literally save the lives of strangers instead of buying a lot of that luxury shit. But they're not going to say that. They're going to say like, no, you can't think of it that way. I know, I know. But at the end of the day, they could save lives instead of buying that luxury thing. They're going to say what they will about that. But everybody's like that. Like, I could go get a job at some place and I could dedicate my time. Instead of doing this shit, I could go get a job at Burger King. I'm not going to do that. And then those people in Africa, they're also not going to do that. They're also human. They also are not like... They're, they could save lives. They could save animal lives. They could just not eat that animal, but they're going to be like, I want 
bacon and I'm going to kill that fucking animal because I care way more about my selfish stuff than you. Really? Yeah. Also, kids. Kids are unnecessary luxury things. And when people have sex, they're going to they're going to try to get whatever they can for their kid. And if that means you're if that's to your detriment, they don't they'll they'll opt for that. They care way more about their thing than they do about your life. And so if you let them, they'll rope you into taking your time and money and, and they're going to serve their interests. Really, everybody's kind of prone to do that. And so basically, if, you, if you're not careful, people can like use and abuse you and they're always going to say, you should like do the thing that converts your time and your effort into serving my ends. And so I just want to make sure to like not do that. But they're not going to say that. They're going to say, no, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. But they'll fucking eat you if they can. <laughs> really? Yeah. And the worst example of that is slaughterhouse animals. If you just look at pigs and sheep in uh Pigs and sheep in the slaughterhouses. That's the most disgusting example of just like, I see that you suffer. You're obviously a being with like pain and fear. You have eyes and ears. We share a common ancestor. That we have, that our DNA is so similar to pigs that you can graft their skin. They're smarter than dogs. They're not like plants. Plants don't have a central nervous system. I see that you suffer, pig. I see. But can you do anything about it? No. I want bacon. I don't want to hear about your mortal pain and suffering. Just, I want my fucking selfish shit. So. I don't know, that's the way people are, but if you're not careful, they'll fucking eat you if they can. Even if just through time and money, people will kind of devour your time and money if you let them. And so it's good to just not fucking let them. Really? Yeah. But it's good to remember people are animals too, and uh, they do some good stuff. Okay, what else? If you think life is a painful, terrifying nightmare, well, cool, now death is like a good thing. But if, you, uh, if you're scared of death, then uh, there must be something good in life that you're worried about not being able to do anymore. So just enjoy that. If you're, if life is good, cool, enjoy it. If life is awful, don't worry, it'll be over before you know it. And then you're like, no, I don't want it to be over. Well, then enjoy it, enjoy it. You can always enjoy it. Well, as long as you're alive, you can always enjoy it. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time you're given. And you can always initiate new thoughts and actions. Really? Yeah. Counter solipsism, what does that mean? Uh, so somebody might, there might be a voice. <laughs> There's something that might say like, uh, dude, we're all one, man. Or, uh, I don't know, sometimes somebody might say, like, how do you know everything in life isn't just your imagination? I might think that. I might start to think something like that. And then I remind myself that, like, that's fucking bullshit because, uh, I don't really know that, but what I do know is that for sure there was a time when I was young when I had no, basically not, I had a totally different body and I had a totally different mind. And before I was born, I don't remember anything. And I don't, I think I had no body like 50 years ago. And so there's a time before, there's a time long ago when I had no mind and no body and no memory. And there's a time when I die that I have no mind and no body. That shit that's not my mind and my body, it doesn't make sense to call that me. That's like as not me as it gets. So what's my point? So just that's, just the world is not words. The world is not words and people are going to, they might try to reconstruct the words to like rope in a bunch of extra stuff into that word, but it doesn't make sense to really call that me. Me is like my mind and my body. And so the shit that's not my mind and my body, that says not me as a gift. Really, yeah, there's new people being born all the time. They're blessedly free of my problems and uh, that'll keep happening. So it's good somewhere. Really, yeah, don't think about sex, aging, and death. Don't try, try not to dwell on things you can't control. And you can jerk off when you go to bed. And be nice to your knees and your hips. And don't slam your knee into the ground a lot. Uh, don't drive over 80 miles an hour. Don't revisit memories of ex-girlfriends. And just be cool, honey, buddy. Just be cool, honey, buddy. Just be cool, honey, buddy. Tell that fucking bitch to chill. Hey, just be cool, honey, buddy. We're going to be like three little Fonzies. What's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda. What's Fonzie like? Cool? What? Cool? Exact All right. What is that? That's from Pulp Fiction. Uh, okay, so pray visualize. What do you want to visualize? Uh, I want to visualize working out. I want to visualize not... To, I have to not touch Tinder in the morning. Basically, touching Tinder in the morning sets up my brain to like trip out about sex for like the next hour. And so I should not, I have to make a rule that like don't touch Tinder till like go to sleep. And then we're gonna try that. We're gonna try to not even touch Tinder until I go to sleep. And then when I go to bed, I'm gonna make a point to just, just like doing the laundry. I'm gonna go through the laundry and I'm just gonna click on the little things. I'm gonna say the little things and then I'm gonna go to sleep. And just assume there's no pussy, but don't waste all that fucking time and mental energy on it. Really, yeah, it's just, there's not gonna be any pussy anyway, but if you, if it takes up all your fucking brain power, that's 
awful. Okay, so what's the point? Uh, okay, so that's it. Dear God, help me to be happy and healthy now my dreams come true. God bless anybody watching my live stream. Help them to be happy and healthy now your dreams, dreams come true. Uh, visualize. What do you want to visualize? I visualize uh, finishing my sculpture and having it look really good. What are three things you're proud of and grateful for? I'm proud of my animation portfolio. I'm proud of having gone skydiving twice. I'm proud of my fitness level. Uh, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful my dad pays all my bills. I'm grateful that I don't have cancer. I'm grateful that I'm tall. What are you excited about? I'm excited about frantically masturbating with super hot chicks. I'm excited about... Um, I'm excited about getting better at jiu-jitsu. I'm excited about doing improv acting. All right. What are your goals for the day? I want to learn a new jiu-jitsu move. I want to go running. I want to do, you know, two hours of drawing, maybe three hours of 3D modeling. That's basically it. Yeah, do some workout. Do uh, do some weird. Just I just want to feel good. I just want to do stuff that makes me feel good. And my real goal is like I don't want to touch Tinder until I go to sleep. And then from now on, I want to not touch Tinder. Tinder is like a toxic thing, and so. Tinder is not to be touched until the last 10 minutes of going to sleep. Just like looking at porn. It's basically the same as looking at porn. I want to make sure to not look at porn because it'll just be on my mind all the time. So basically just just Tinder and porn, I just want to think of them as like the same thing and don't even touch them until I go to sleep and then I can waste all that mental. Just Then you just go to sleep. But in the mo if I think about it in the morning, it's going to be my, on my mind all day. So yeah. Okay, so what else? That's it. Uh, report goals. Uh, right, so what did you do yesterday? Did, did your jiu-jitsu move work yesterday? No, I tried to, I would do, I want to do a triangle on somebody when they're, when I have them in mount position, but it didn't work because there just, there wasn't really the opportunity to do it. It seems too hard to really like set that up. Anyway, so I'm not gonna even try to do that let's just try to do mount escape all right so let's break down the mount escape into five steps I know you guys like butt shots and Adam. I'm going to show you guys the mount escape detail. Check this out. If you've ever done this one where you do the frame and you cook up the foot and you bring it to a half guard, here's a little way to make it easier to get the foot. So one of the things I've seen from my students is they'll try to hook and it just doesn't work. If you want to get this leg from making it easier to pick up and make it heal, do this first. Just do this first. Take the top of the leg and begin to draw the foot in. Just do this first. Most people are all of those people have to be weak external rotation. And then that means as the leg goes out, they don't have a lot of flexibility and a lot of times that leg wants to come back in anyway. So what you do is we get the foot first and we want you to resist the pressure and then you get the foot back in. 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 Uh, you guys see how easy it is for us to switch between them? Put two hands on there. I have the triangle position. As I'm doing triangle, he angles himself. Yes. Here. Turn reverse. Omaplata. As I'm going omaplata, he angles himself. Now I'm aligned with his head, right? Pressure. Triangle. Now he starts changing angles again. Omaplata. You guys see how easy it is for us to switch between them? Home.
means whenever things were going crazy we built a when my life gets crazy and you are emotional if you yes. scream ah, help over here if you panic like this so every time I ever talked on the radio my goal was to never sound panicked never sound emotional no matter what was going on sound very calm and cool so that means whenever things were going crazy and I was about to have to get on the radio, what would I have to do? Breathe. I had to breathe. <laughs> I had to take a breath. And, and so it's the same thing. It's just that something that I was doing so that I could, you know, I'd be in the, oh, there's got stuff going on. Get, okay, I'm about to talk on the radio. <sighs> hey, this is Jocko. We need about 10 more guys down to this building right now. And that, me taking control of my, of my breath also would help me get into a controlled emotional state where I'm not losing my mind. Yes. That's very powerful. From jujitsu. Yes, because you know the, oh my God. the, the breathing system. Or because you stay seven you days without food. You stay three days without water. Five minutes without oxygen is already dead. <laughs> yes. So the efficiency of the breathing system is very needed. And people take this for granted. They don't Oh, I, 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 I born, I get slapped on the butt, ah, 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 and you're alive and well, and you can live, like, if you don't train in breathing, it's like your biceps, it's like your, your, your strategies, your techniques, your jujitsu. if you don't train in the breathing system, you're going to work with 40% less the, capa the cap capabilities to really refresh yourself, hyperventilate, bringing yourself to a next level of understanding because if you get tired and you don't know how to hyperventilate you get tired and your mind starts to fade to fade a little bit you start to make important decisions you start to get completely off your game because there's no oxygen enough for the brain and the, and the body but if you know how to hyperventilate you can have cramps, acid lactic all over. You cannot even move well, very tired, but your brain is too sharp. You can see details, you can see the girl smile at you, you can see the soup boy, you can see everything you want to see and talk because your brain is still fresh. And that's the capacity you have to learn how to hyperventilate and use the diaphragmatic breathing, which impro improves your life like a ton. Oh, that's awesome stuff. Uh, uh, Going through the book, I mean, at this time, you also, uh, you had met your, you had met Kim. Yes. You, she got pregnant with your first son. Yes. At this time. Um, and she was what, some kind of a model, some kind of a yeah, surfer she girl. Was, uh, she was the first sponsored surfer girl in Brazil. She was doing hang gliding. She was a top model for, for fashion. She do some, some, uh modeling for for soap operas and stuff so she was pretty, pretty hot girl at the time um i'm gonna fast forward a little bit here so you you, you have your first son it says the year 1982 was a bittersweet one i was now the father of the son i had always dreamed of but i also suffered a devastating loss in june holes and his family went for a family weekend in the mountains Holes noticed his old hang glider was strapped to the roof of a car in front of his hotel. It turned out that the owner was a friend of a friend. Even though my brother had promised his wife, Angela, that he would quit hang gliding after he had several close calls and friends had died in accidents, he made arrangements to go the next day. The following day, the conditions were very bad because there was no wind. 
If Holes got his mind set on something, however, there was no saying no to him. Although the owner of his old hang glider did not want to go because he thought it was too dangerous, Holes talked him into letting him use it for just one flight. My brother ran down the ramp, launched, initially got some lift, but then began to spiral and he hit the ground 90 yards from the ramp. His friend ran over ran into the overgrown forest and found my brother hanging upside down with his eyes wide open. Although he looked perfectly fine, his neck was broken and Holes was dead. I received the news over the phone and it took only seconds to know that my life would never be the same. Not only had I lost an idol, a teacher, and my favorite brother, but I was now officially the family champion. Now I would have to answer all the challenges and lead the next generation of Gracie fighters. I was now my family's last line of defense. His death affected our family dynamics dramatically. Holes had brought the two sides together because he was Carlos' son, but raised by Elio. He acted as a bridge between the two sides of the family, but now that bridge was gone forever. <sighs> Tragic. Yes. I know uh, my 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 original teacher Fabio Santos. Yes. Yeah, he he was originally a uh, Holes student yes, as well. Yes, yes, he was. And and uh, I was he the way he talked about Holes was always uh, just elevated beyond belief. Yes, Fabio has a passion for Holes, not only for the teachings and, and being a jiu-jitsu guy and inspire him to 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 do the best. But they also have a lot in common, you know. They they go out together. They so they're good friends. So it was devastating for Fabio. Mm. At this time, on top of all this, you start to have this uh, this kind of famous or infamous rivalry with uh, Luta Livre fighters. Yes, and had some um, had some uh, interesting <laughs> interesting things going on there and again this this book is so filled with so many of these details that people will be interested in meanwhile you 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 have a uh, daughter right yes your first daughter and then a second daughter yes. so now you're now you're up to three kids and again these are all things that are uh, detailed in the book and all kinds of interesting stories around that you also say the Gracie clan continued to, to divide along bloodlines while Horian was trying to establish our martial arts in the United States, Carlos Gracie Jr. was going in a different direction in Brazil and primarily focusing on a competitive form of jiu-jitsu that would become known as sport jiu-jitsu. And this is what uh, thing I appreciated. You said, I had little interest in the politics of jiu-jitsu. I had three children to support. I wanted to fight Valai Tudo professionally and the only place to do that outside of Brazil was in Japan. So at this point, Horian had moved to America. Yes. And and you're looking at um, possibly fighting in Japan. Yes, going with my friend to Japan to see if I can find some... I was having a letter of introduction to Antonio Inoki, which was ambassador in Japan, very famous wrestler. And I tried to find a pick a fight through him in Japan. So I was there, but I was... You know, was I could not achieve my goal and back to Brazil. And and then you have Crone is born. Yes. And now things are really seem to be heating up with the Luta Livre Academy. And there, there's a at one point, um, you guys go to the Luta Livre Academy. Okay, yes. You say here, we walked in and 20 or 30 fighters stopped training and stared at us. Marco Huas rocked, walked over and greeted us. Everyone's very respectful at first. I told Huas that I...
All right, so my goal is to look at the character, commit to whatever it seems like the character wants to say. Simple things, they can be like mundane things, boring things, they don't have to be extreme. And they should be relevant to the story. They should be, re I should build on what previously happened in the story, not just totally random stuff. Okay, so that's my goal. Uh, try to build in the story with plausible things. Develop the characters. All right. Let's, nobody's out there, right? Let's create a let's create a virtual audience. Virtual audience in the future, they're gonna have VR, so people can get over their stage fright. With virtual audiences. Everyone's watching you, Sean. Everyone's watching you. Steven here says, I'm so glad I... Front. Uh-oh. It's a hot chick. A hot chick is watching you. How intimidating. All right, here we go. Ready? She's watching you, Sean. She's judging you. Okay. Ready? Go. All right, so just look at... I want to look at the character, and I want to commit to whatever it seems like the character wants to say. And try to build on, um, try to build on the story. It can be simple, boring stuff, but there's no wrong answer except not just looking at the character and committing to whatever it seems like the character wants to say. God damn, fucking lost my dog. <laughs> I don't give a shit. God damn, man, you're the nastiest neighbor I've ever had. I'd like it if you moved out of here. Fuck you. This is my property. I'm not moving out. Well, right. Well, I'm just gonna mow my lawn real loud. Uh, how do you like that? Fucking whatever. I've lost my hearing. I can't even hear you. Honey, what's going on over there? I'm just mowing the lawn real loud so this old man gets, gets irritated. I can't hear anything you're saying. Hey, how you doing with your stupid bitch wife? Uh, did you hear that? What a fucking asshole. He's calling you a stupid bitch. Yeah, he always was an asshole. I just ignore him. I don't mind him. Oh, hey, Janine. Didn't notice you standing there. Uh, hello. How's it going, old man? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, what a fucking asshole. Yeah, but I kind of, uh, I like his, I like his, his, uh, daughter. Hey, Joe, how's it going over there? Are you looking at his daughter? Hey, how's it going, lady? Pretty good. Uh, are you are you bothered by my dad? What? What are you talking about? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Uh, no, no. Your dad's a very nice man. A little hard of hearing, but, uh, you know, he's very nice. Oh, you think I'm nice? That's so nice of you. You're such a nice guy. Hey, I thought you couldn't hear me. I fucking lied. Your lawnmower sucks. I bought a better lawnmower the other day at Home Depot. Check out my fucking lawnmower. Yeah, we got a really good, we got a power lawnmower. It's stainless steel. It's turbocharged. I fucking, what a fucking asshole. God damn it. He's always showing me up. He's always showing me up. Whatever I got, he's got a better version of it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let him, don't let him get to your, get in your head. I'm getting in your fucking head, aren't I? Uh, no, no, uh, I don't have... I don't have any brain. My brain doesn't work and you can't get in my head. That's right, you don't have any brain. I thought you couldn't hear, old man. I can hear if I can hear. I, I have selective hearing. I hear what the fuck I want to hear. Hey, Dad, what's going on? Oh, hey, Junior. Uh, 
I gotta go have lunch. How would you like to mow my lawn? Our lawn, it's our lawn. You can mow the lawn for a dollar. I'll give you a fucking dollar. It's, it's uh, 2024, Dad. You're gonna have to give me $10. Eh, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just do it myself. But I'm gonna give you a spanking. No, no, don't give me a spanking. Spank him, spank our son. You fucking little sucker. God damn it, I'll fucking spank my fucking son. Yeah, fucking spank him. Spank your fucking son. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm spanking the dog. Oh, oh, oh. I'm spanking the dog like father, like son. Hey, you're, you're good at spanking, son. I'm proud of you. Now, when you spank, you got to put your wrist into it and use your shoulder. I, I'll, I'll develop as I go. But here, can you keep spanking me? I'll fucking spank my fucking son. God damn it, God damn it. Oh, poor son. I'm sorry, Junior. You should really listen to your dad more often and do what he says. Uh, he's a fucking asshole. And his, his lawnmower really sucks. He doesn't even really spank very hard. Get inside. Listen, old man. I'm tired of you showing me up. Everything I buy, you have a better version of it. I'm challenging you to a fucking duel. What? Uh, I can't hear you. You heard me, goddammit. I'm challenging you, challenging you to a goddamn duel. Here. Take that fucking gun. Oh, you just got, you just got guns on you all the time. Yeah, hey, of course. I'm a real man. This is Texas. I got fucking five guns on me, but you can have the best one. And you, you keep it close. It's gold gun. It's fancy. It'll look good on you. And you're gonna want to look good, cause you're gonna die with that gun. Oh fuck shit! I didn't say go yet. I don't fight fair, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I was in the war. That's what they told me in the fucking war. Don't fight fair. Oh my god, my husband's dead. Now I get a, I get his fancy lawnmower. <laughs> hey, get the lawnmower. You get a really fancy lawnmower, and I get full custody of my kid. He wasn't very good in bed anyway. Oh, my fucking... That's what you get for fucking spanking me, Dad. I spit on your fucking dead, bloody body. Oh, son, I just want to tell you that I would... Shut the fuck up, Dad. Just fucking die already. I'm going to fucking cut your fucking head off. And there you fucking go. Hey, let's put Dad's severed head on the wall. Oh, that's so nice. You can go put it on the wall. You'll never have any more problems with us, neighbor. All right, fucking... Uh, Thanks for all your help. Nah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, have a good day. So they have a good day, and uh, they uh, they mount the dad's head on the wall, and they they fill it with formaldehyde and various preservation agents, and it stays there for 50 years. That's a good story, Sean. What's the moral? The moral is, don't be an don't physically abuse your kid, or he might cut your head off and put it on the wall. That's a good story. Thanks.